G'day. So I've got a miss in the engine of my Toyota Bandera. Now something my grandfather said to me when I was very young was always start with the simple things first. And the number of times I see people say, ah, oh, you gotta fix the cylinder head. You know, your head gasket's blown. And the issue is a shorting plug lead or something like that, which gets resolved when you fix the head gasket. But hey, it wasn't the problem. So always start with the simple things first. So I've been doing that over a period of time to find out what this miss is about. Well, I think I've got to the bottom of it. And I think the problem is my valve stem seals. But that's caused a number of other issues down the line. And we're going to look into that in this series of videos. Here at Mad Matt 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building community. So if you love this content and it's really helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down the bottom there. So where is the issue? Well, this motor on the overrun or on a prolonged idle tends to smoke up a little bit after that. And that indicates that these little seals here, the valve stem seals, I'll hold that up for you, you can see that tiny little seal. We'll get into these in more detail in a minute. Uh, well, in, later in the video, but they seal engine oil from getting into the combustion chamber by sealing around the valve stem. And in this motor, when I'm on a prolonged overrun, which is basically when the motor's generating its highest level of vacuum, a little bit of oil sucks down past those seals, and then I get a smoke, a plume of blue smoke out the exhaust. Or if I prolong idle, same thing happens when I can't give it a blip on the throttle or take off from a set of traffic lights, I get a big plume of blue smoke. Classic symptoms of these seals being failed. Now here's why I'm getting a miss. If this was a carburetor engine, it wouldn't be giving me a miss. But this is what I reckon is going on. The engine oil is coming through the exhaust system and it's fouled up one of my O2 sensors. Being a V6, I've got two of these. The O2 sensor is all about measuring how much oxygen is in the exhaust system. So essentially, what I've noticed when I changed my spark plugs the other day was that the right-hand bank, these three cylinders here, are really sooted up. The left-hand bank is giving me perfectly normal-looking spark plugs. And that says to me that the O2 sensor on the right-hand bank is getting incorrect readings. And I believe it's because these valve stem seals have sooted up that particular O2 sensor. So that is the job today. Change the valve stem seals now. This is gonna be the interesting part, is to change valve stem seals, normally you take the cylinder head off. Now I've never actually done this procedure, although I've heard about it since I was an apprentice. You can do it by uh, just pulling the rocker gear off and leaving the cylinder heads on. So the way we're going to do that is we're gonna put um, the engine on TDC, we're going to put it, um, a little bit of compressed air into the cylinder to hold the valves closed, and then we're gonna pull the valve, stem, the, the valve uh, springs and collets off and put the valve stem seals on and do it this way. The risk is, <laughs> if I drop one of those exhaust valves, guess what my job is? Yeah, taking cylinder heads off. I do not want to do that. So this is going to be an interesting series of videos. What I'm going to do so that you guys can kind of chunk through this and get to the pieces of information you need to, to know, um, I'm going to junk, chunk this down into a series of videos. I'm going to try and keep each one around about 10 minutes long and um, just to help you get to what you need. But we're also gonna put the whole lot together in one long, long video, however, however long that is, so you can watch the whole thing back to back if that's what you're interested in. Now, whilst I'm doing this series of work, just for my own information, I'm actually going to do a compression test of, as well. And that is where I'm going to find out um, how healthy my piston rings, my valves are, on this motor, just for my reference. I know, I'm assuming it's gonna come up good because the motor in general seems to be a fairly healthy sort of motor. But it's just a test I'm gonna do it at the same time, so that'll also be one of the videos. So we're gonna cover off the following. We're gonna cover off a bit more about uh, O2 sensors. We're gonna cover off changing the valve stem seals. We're gonna cover off 
the uh, compression test and we're also going to just have a look at the spark plugs when I take them out and compare them to the new spark plugs I've got here. Um, I tend to use NGK uh, spark plugs. Why? I don't know. I've always used them. Since I was an apprentice, it was just like, do you want to use Champion? Do you want to use Bosch? Do you want to... I just always use NGK. Yeah. I don't know. They always seem to do the job anyway. So, uh, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, an interesting video. I hope you appreciate. It. Like I say, hit that subscribe button. If you, you know, this is basically the introduction video. Um, then we'll go on to the other ones. Now, a little bit about these vehicles because this is my third Bandera. Uh, it's a short wheelbase Toyota Land Cruiser. It's coil sprung. Its vehicle designation is RJ70 for the petrols, which had a 22R 2.4 carburetor petrol motor, or an LJ70, which is uh, the 2LT diesel motor came out in these. This is for the Australian market. There were some variants around the world. They, were, they ran through the mid 80s. Uh, this is an 88 model. When I purchased this vehicle about three, four years ago, or three years ago, I should say, it was a disaster with rust. And now I'm going through the process of modifying it and building it into the vehicle that I want it to be. So I've done a whole heap of bar work. I've made my, my own custom front bull bar winch cradle and winch mount, giving me about 70 degrees of approach angle, which is brilliant off-road. Made my own stainless steel uh, snorkel, complete with stainless steel head and all of that. I've made my own steel flares, but they're actually brush bars. Well, they're made out of pipe and they're really solid. I actually laid the vehicle against them in a rut the other day and they took the weight of the truck, just no worries at all. I've made my own rock sliders and I've made my own rear bar, which I've made so that I incorporate excellent departure angles. I've taken the actual tow pack, raised it and shortened it just to improve that departure angle. Um, I've done things like mount my UHF aerial here on the RFI mount up here on the guard just so that it's back and gives me a little bit extra height for that radio reception. Um, some of my future plans, I'm in the process of putting a, a four inch lift into it. So it's going to have a total of six inches of lift. It's got a two inch body lift in it now. Um, it's running 33 inch tires. No, I love those. <laughs> And so they're the 33 12.5 by 15 wheels. Um, ultimately, I actually want to put 80 series differentials under this, which will bring each tire outwards about 80 millimeters. So it will make it a lot wider. Um, I'm in the process also, I'd like to put into it a, uh, uh, a four link rear suspension in it. These have a really unique suspension. They're, they're coil sprung, but they're a three link. So you know, same setup as the front of the GQ, GU patrols or your 80 series, 105 series Land Cruisers where you've got two radius arms and a panhard rod. That, that's how this is set up front and rear. Um, so it's, they're quite a different sort of vehicle. A lot of their running gear is actually based on a Hilux type variant. Um, some of the other modifications I've done, I've changed the gearbox in this. The standard gearbox for this designation, RJ70, is a G52. I've actually put an, an R151 gearbox, which comes out of the diesel variant, the LJ70. Don't get confused, stay with me. And the reason for that is the diesel gearbox is a stronger gearbox, so it's coping with the power out of the Ecotech, not that they're that powerful. I guess this thing up in boogies. Um, she will wheel stand. Um, if you get into a corner, she'll pick up that front left wheel pretty easy. Um, but it gives me an excellent crawl gear in first low, and it gives me a really nice, nice fifth gear. So what that's going to allow me to do, and then one of the next modifications I'll be doing in the next month or two, is fitting twin diff locks to it. But I'm going to fit a 5.29 diff ratio in here. It's currently 4.88. It crawls superb as it is. But with the 5.29 gear ratios, I reckon I'm going to see a lot better crawling. What I find at the moment, fifth gear is okay at 100, 110 kilometers an hour, but come to a rise and she just, she's just a little bit laggy. You drop it to fourth and she screams. So if, with the lower diff ratios, fifth gear is going to become a bit more usable. Um, so that's, that's a bunch of the modifications um, that I've got planned. That's where she's at today. Um, I know it's not totally on track for the video um, about this engine mod, but I can't help bragging about it because I love the thing. 
So anyway, enjoy the rest of these videos. And uh, I hope you really learned something today as I uh, delve into this motor. Hopefully by the end of today, I'll have a sweet running uh, motor again. That'll be good. All right, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that, uh, uh, watch that second video as well or any of the other in this series. 